Good afternoon, this is Mike Fowler at Orange County Telescope here with the brand new Celestron Nexstar Evolution. This is their uh, eight inch version of the telescope and we're gonna show you today a little bit on how to uh, get it set up and running with a phone or tablet using their uh, Sky Portal app. Hey, how's it going? Uh, so this is unique in that this is one of the few no, a few. One of the only telescopes I've ever seen where the first thing you do is you unplug it before you take it out and use it because it has the rechargeable lithium ion battery. Uh, I believe from reading the instruction manual, which I actually did, uh, that uh, Celestron recommends that, it, that you don't let this go for more than three or six months uh, on a low battery charge. So that's something to remember. Um, but basically what you do here, oh and the other thing is, is we have it set up with uh, some non-standard equipment. I wanted to show that uh, a two inch diagonal, I had a couple of questions from uh, uh, people uh, right on the cusp of ordering this uh, as to whether or not their two inch diagonal will fit. Um, and it did not with the uh, standard Nexstar, but on the uh, updated Evolution, you can see there's actually plenty of room down here to go well past uh, straight up what's known as Zenith. Uh, for us astronomer people, um, so you can use uh, all kind. There's all kinds of room uh, now uh, on the the next star evolution telescope. So that's an exciting development. So now that I've unplugged it, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it on. There's an O N slash O F F switch located uh, just below the right hand side right here. You turn it on, and you can see that it uh, initially begins uh, broadcasting uh, a Wi-Fi signal. And this is where I kind of want to show you. Uh, one of the initial uh, um, uh, growth opportunities that I had uh, with this app uh, and, and what I did is I let, let me see if you guys can see this here I'm going to step behind and see if we can re eliminate the the uh, reflections here so uh, I went to the Play Store and I downloaded uh, the Celestron Sky Portal app and we're going to put our glasses on Bear with me here one second. And uh, the first time what I did is I went to settings because I know that the telescope is now broadcasting a Wi-Fi signal. And I went to uh, Skylink and Connect. And I'm uh, very excited because I can see that it's connected right there. And then I turned on the Sky Portal app and it's uh, loaded, it says connected. And then here in just a second, it's gonna go to uh, the star chart. And then what I saw if it'll come up here. Now, of course, it's lagging because I had to uninstall it and then reinstall it here. What is it doing now? There is where it is. It says license verification failed. And I was very concerned. I didn't know what was going on. So I called Celestron support uh, and they said, hey, well, why don't you exit that? Go back to your settings. Make sure that the uh, Google Play Store can actually see that the app turns on. Go back to Sky Portal now that I'm on my local Wi-Fi network, connected to my local Wi-Fi AT&T there. And now it has actually gone and verified that this is a, uh, a Google app, so everything runs and comes up correct. So none of that licensing issue comes up. So that was a, a real growth opportunity there for me for about 20 minutes the first day, trying to figure out that. But now that I'm on my local network and the, and the uh, Sky Portal app has uh, registered itself, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my settings, go to Skylink, click on connect, and here in just a second it's going to connect, connected, go back to the app itself, turn on, and now we should be able to do something like uh, connect and align, right? And right here, there you go. And now I am controlling the Evolution Telescope with my Wi-Fi network and uh, with, no, not my Wi-Fi network, with its Wi-Fi network. So you can be uh, out in the field somewhere and, and use this uh, because it's broadcasting its own Wi-Fi network. So, um, and then what I did is because uh, I can't do a, a three-star alignment in the store here. I was concerned, well, how am I going to show people how this works? And then I, I remembered that the old hand control unit on the next star, uh, what we would do is we would go and do like a planetary alignment. Um, or, or imagine if I could go outside, if I could, if I could go outside right now and I could see, okay, there's the moon, but it's not dark yet. Or if I have really good eyes, I can see 
maybe Venus or even Jupiter you can see during the day sometimes. Um, so if that's the case, then what I want to do, because, uh, uh, and uh, forgive me if I'm uh, jumping ahead, but because I cannot accurately know exactly where three points in the sky are during the day while I'm uh, showing people how to use it, I wanted to be able to show people how to go about the alignment procedure uh, um, if they in the store here so that we can go to things uh, or if you want to uh, use it during the day. So uh, in the manual, it covers it under settings right there. And again, I'm going to go back over here, make sure everybody else can see here. Under settings, I can go to uh, setup and control and oh, it stayed there. So normally it's defaulted to under the behavior align using sky, sky align and that's their three star alignment procedure. This is uh, align using manual align which allows you to align to objects during the day. Uh, if you have a proper solar filter or if you can see the moon that kind of stuff during the day. So I'm going to leave that there Oh, and use the X button. Alright so now what I'm going to do is I, let's say that I can see Venus. So I'm going to choose Venus and I don't know if you saw that but now Venus has a little X across it and if I was quiet you can hear that it has like a little feedback. Let's see if I turn up my volume is all the way. So it has a little feedback and now it shows that there's a little bullseye uh, on the planet Venus. So at this point uh, if I was outside looking at Venus I would then move the telescope up and over and I can I can use two different directions at the same time and and once I got close like and, and at this point what I would be doing is I would be looking at Venus and I would be looking through the red dot finder at Venus and then once it was in the red dot finder I would be looking in, from the red dot finder into the eyepiece. Once I go to the eyepiece and I see Venus is actually on the eyepiece then I would hit enter and it slows, it automatically slows the rate down. I don't know if you saw that it, it defaults the rate which is also a slider but as soon as I hit that it changes it to a slower rate so that I can be more accurate and I don't know if you can hear the telescope moving. It's very very, it's moving very very slowly now, much more slowly so I can be more accurate. So once I have the telescope uh, pointed directly at Venus then I can hit a line. Now uh, it says tap another object in the chart to select it. Tap go to move, to move the object. So uh, how come? Oh, and it did. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> I I was looking at something else, and you can see here that it's aligned. So objects aligned one. Now if I can get two objects, the alignment will be more more better. Did I just really say that? More accurate. Uh, but but if all I can see is Venus and uh, and I press done at this point you get this alignment incomplete you haven't aligned on three stars go to may not be accurate however it's accurate enough at this point that it should be roughly counteracting 80% of uh, Venus's movement across the sky so that I can watch it for a while and now all of the other features are active on the uh, on the tablet. So if I wanted to go over here and look at Rigel, first of all, I could I could scroll in and I could see you know all the the items that are over here in Orion and Betelgeuse and the Orion Nebula. If I wanted to see that, I could click on that nebulosity and then hit go to, and off the telescope goes. Now let me get a close up shot of this. And as the telescope gets closer, you can see the bullseye on the tablet shows you that you are now exactly pointed to the Great Orion Nebula. So it's just that easy. If I wanted to go uh, up to Betelgeuse, I could click on Betelgeuse and then press go to and away it goes. And you can see it took the, a little bit of lag there with the, the bullseye but it comes right back and it shows you all about it. 
uh, there you go. I mean, that's pretty much it. That's, uh, you're going to do uh, roughly that type of alignment, except three times. Uh, when you do the sky align, which is the nighttime alignment, what you're going to do is you're going to do the same kind of choose a star, right? Look at it in the sky, find that star, move the telescope to it, press align, do that three times uh, with the tablet, and you're up and running. There is a whole host of features uh, in this program. Um, that will be covered in another video coming up, but I wanted to do this real quick just to let you guys hear uh, the telescope and see how it moves and uh, one of the uh, growth opportunities with that app that I found uh, that you have to make sure that the app recognizes uh, uh, itself on uh, an open network first before you go and use it with this or it won't be verified, okay? So there you go. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day.